Yeah, hi guys. Uh, Ryan back here with you again. Um, we finished up our delivery down there in uh, McAllen, Texas, uh, down by far. It went pretty smooth, a lot better than I thought it was going to go, looking at the Google reviews at that place. I um, was really in and out of there in about an hour or so, and I would have been out of there a lot quicker if, um, if I would have been at the right, found the right door and um, had another guy that moved in and got in there ahead of me at, while I was looking for the doors, and I was actually there like 15 minutes before him, but they took him first. But uh, so it would have been out a little bit quicker, but uh, we had quite a night running down here from uh, the Texarkana area. Um, had the uh, the big red stop sign on the dash, uh, the stop engine immediately. Um, I know I had told you guys the other day on the last video I had some issues uh, with the emission DPF stuff, the regen, kept on the regen, 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 um, that last, that night, that night I did that video, the morning of that night I did that last video on uh, the update for the road and all that. And uh, I went through some salt up in, um, oh, wait, I went to the snow up in Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky. We had, there was a lot of salt. My truck's got a lot of salt on it. I need to get it washed somewhere. The uh, whole bottom's coated. Um, what's happening, this thing wants to constantly regen. It never, it seems like it's not getting to where it wants to be. But it's real erratic because uh, I'll, I'll get, it'll come on and say it needs a forced regen and it'll go back off. It'll come on again, then it did that. It wanted me to, it like wanted a, a, a dealer force regen uh, with uh, Cummins Insight. It got to that point where I thought I was going to have to unhook that EGR temp sensor before it, you know, shut the truck down or derated me way, way down for five mile an hour or whatever. Um, but I ended up getting that cleared. Then it went away. Then everything went away. Then it came, stuff came back again, um, you know, for a full regen and all that stuff. So, um, luckily I made it down here without having to do anything crazy. And, um, <clears throat> so I got to thinking and I'm, I'm kind of thinking it might be the, that DPF differential pressure sensor down there on the DPF. Um, there's a lot of salt and stuff on it. As you guys know, I did replace that wiring harness. Um, so I, I think I'm going to go ahead and replace the sensor as well, or I am going to, I'm not, not thinking. Um, I actually stopped down at French Ellis and Kenworth down there and uh, far right outside of McCat, kind of, kind of coming up 281 there out of town. And uh, they had a sensor in stock for $130, so I went ahead and grabbed it up. And uh, I'm up here at the Pilot now, about 60 miles or north of the uh, yeah, Pilot. I can find the same thing. Um, the town starts with an F up here, and I can't pronounce it, up here on 281. Like I said, 60, 70 miles north of the far McAllen, Texas area. Pretty quiet here. I've stayed here before. Um, yeah, pretty empty. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and change that out. It's pretty easy to get to, but uh, I want to show you guys what's going on, on on the dash here and with the PDI. So if you're having the same problem and if this fixes it, then, you know, that's what it is. So, I mean, my I checked out bellows and exhaust bellows. There's no exhaust leaks or anything because that could cause problems like this, too. Um, so I don't know since that thing, that thing had been leaking for a while. I, I put it off. I should have fixed it a lot sooner on that exhaust bellows. Um, so I don't know, maybe it's getting full exhaust flow now, it's not leaking, so maybe it pushed some soot up into that sensor, or maybe it could be the salt, so or the, the salt from the road that's up in the connection or something, or somehow got into the sensor. So we're going to take the, we're going to replace the sensor, and we're going to clean the contacts, and I'm, I'm going to clean the hoses that go to the probes uh, for the, the sensor as well, because there's two rubber lines and two probes uh, before the ash and after ash on the DPF. Um, that actually tell what percentage, uh, what your soot levels are, what percentage that, that DPF's full. Um, so, and everybody always talks about NOx sensors and all that, but this differential pressure sensor can be a problem as well. So, I'll show you what we got going on the dash, then um, I'll get suited up. I'll show you guys the sensor, show you what we're going to do. We'll go ahead and do it here in a minute. Uh, and then after that, I'll probably go in here and grab a shower and all that and call it a day, hopefully. So, uh, I'll go ahead and turn this around. And I'll show you what's on the dash here. Okay, so here's what we're dealing with right now. You got the D-rate service uh, engine light on. That usually means you have a D-rate condition. And and uh, your boost to be limited, uh, it's about 22, 24 PSI or so. So it uh, it's considerably lower than I normally get. I'm usually pushing 35-ish, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm under a load. And uh, you got the flashing uh, DPF light here is on too so that means it wants a full forced region right now which i can do myself um, off of the pdi i think it might actually do it on the uh the button down here as well 
Um, so on the PDI, sorry, it's kind of a glare. You can actually see it's got the 1921 call code uh, after treatment, the uh, DPF filter, differential pressure, data valid, but above normal operating range. Um, so I'm thinking, like I said, it's uh, could be in the, the connection or it could be the sensor itself. So in a way that it's been really erratic, um, where it's been the problem comes on and goes off. I mean, I think if the filter was plugged up, then it would be it would stay that way consistently. It'd be plugged up, not where it's fine now, then it's bad, then it's fine. You know, so um, that's what we got on the dash. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to go here, and we'll start back up here in a second. All right, so. Uh, Went inside, got me something to eat real quick, and um, threw a long sleeve shirt on to get uh, underneath the truck here because it's, it's a newer parking lot here, but it's still a little dirty. I wish I had a piece of cardboard or something. But uh, so here's the uh, part, it's the new part. Uh, part number on this two eight seven one nine six zero for that uh, differential pressure sensor. There's two. I mean, there's one for the EGR, then there's one. For the DPF so when I went there I called him first and when I got there he had the one out for the EGR core when I told him like three times it was for the DPF not the EGR um, or EGR not EGR core but EGR um, so here's what it looks like so there's two ports on the bottom where there's two lines with probes that go before ash and after ash on the DPF and uh, we'll get underneath there and show it to you. The uh, only thing we're really going to need is um, some uh, decent rubber gloves, if you can find some, because everybody thinks they're going to wear them these days where they're driving their cars around by themselves and everything else. But uh, I get these from uh, Harbor Freight. They used to be like the 7 mil. These are really, they hold up pretty well. Um, you used to be able to get them for like $12 a box. Now they're like 20 So it is what it is, I guess. So. But, uh, all right, we'll go ahead and uh, get underneath there. Other than that, uh, probably just need a, uh, just got a metric socket set and 3 8 ratchet. There's just two bolts in it and, uh, and uh, something to disconnect that lock in the, uh, the, the electrical socket or plug on the wiring harness down there, and that's really it. So we'll go ahead and get underneath there real quick, and um, I'll show you what we're going to do, and go ahead and do it real quick, and hopefully it fixes the problem. Well, the other thing, uh, contact cleaner, and i got to grab that out. <laughs> Um, so I want to clean up the contacts because I'll show you all the salt and everything that's down there. Um, so go ahead and grab that contact cleaner and then we'll get underneath there and see what we got. Okay, we're underneath the truck here and uh, I'm sorry for if it's noisy. Uh, there's a little bit of wind and uh, the guy next door to me is idling the truck for some reason. I don't. It's perfect temperature, but to each their own. Uh, so here's the sensor. It's got these two bolts here that go through. Oh, my uh, contact cleaner is blowing away. Not good. Oh. Ah. This stuff's like ten dollars a can. So I don't know how it, how the wind caught that, but. All right, back to it here. So again, uh, sensors right here. Got these two lines. That uh, well, that's where it gets the pressure readings from. These these go way down uh, into the middle of the DPF. These tubes do. One on each side before and after, and um, this should just pop out once you press this in. But I'll, I'll probably have to use my other. You, you uh, press that in and, and pull it out. Um, and this connector, you gotta take a pocket knife or something, and uh, you have to move this little lock over. And kind of again, it takes two hands here, so. Uh, there we go. So you push that up, and you can just pull that out. Oh well. Um, yeah. So all this is all salt. All this white stuff uh, off the roads or brine or whatever it is. But it can uh, 
caused problems with electrical stuff, so we're gonna clean that up, just plug up real well, change this guy out, and um, we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop this and do the work real quick. Um, it's pretty pretty easy, so I think we've explained it well. I mean, uh, I'll probably take a look inside these lines just to make sure there's nothing, no debris or anything inside those that might got blown up in there that could be causing a problem. Um, Again, I, I just cleaned this DPF in the spring, uh, that is the center section here. Um, I did a video, I think, when I put it back in, but when I do it again, I'll do a full a full video on it because it was in the winter time and snowing and all that when I did it. So, but um, I'll go ahead and take this off and um, see what we got. Okay, so I got this off and um, I wasn't going to show you guys uh, this portion when I was doing this, but uh, I found something interesting. Uh, first I was going to show you, see these these clips, you just press that in and it uh, releases that off of that bevel. Um, I dropped this on the ground and when I did, anyways, that water came out or whatever that is. Um, so this had fluid in it, or water, or something. So um, that's probably an issue. <laughs> it, uh, there, there probably shouldn't be water in it. I can't get it. No, there's a little bit more. See it coming out right there. And that was on the um, inlet side. So somehow this had this got water in it, or salt, or something. So. Um, I'm feeling a lot better about changing this out being the right uh, decision. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this plug out here with the contact cleaner. Let's get a shot. That guy cleaned out. Um, I actually just blew on these just to make sure there was no restriction. Um, so I probably want to wash my lips off before anything or something like that. So um, they they both seem clear. But um, now that I'm seeing that there's water or something coming out of this, um, that ain't that that isn't right. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in or put the new one in. And uh, these little lines here, they just uh, just push on there and clip on the two bolts right there. And I'll plug it back in and lock the clip in, and that, that's pretty much it. So I'll go ahead and get this done. i uh, get everything cleaned up here, and we'll go back uh, top side and uh, see what we got. All right, so back in the truck here, uh, started it up. Uh, the other guy shut his must have figured out that it was nice outside so he shut his truck off and opened up his windows and I there was a lot of open spots here so instead of being the bad guy with my truck idling with the fan kicking in and out and out when I'm doing a regen um, I decided to, to spin it around and pull into another spot I don't usually park like this because uh, sometimes it can be a hassle to to get back out so um, if there's once I get done with everything I got to do I might flip it back around and park somewhere else back in I like to back in so um, so I'm doing a regen right now. It took the, uh, the DPF light off. The, uh, the check engine, the service engine light's still on. Um, you can still see that down there. That one still on. Um, so gonna go ahead and let it do its thing. It'll probably take an hour or so. Um, then once I do that, uh, once it, once it gets down out of that, it won't let me do, uh, you can actually on the, the PDI up here, you can actually uh, reset the deferential pressure uh, levels or whatever, the sensors basically on the before ash and after ash. Um, so I'm gonna do the regen, then I'll go in and, and do those uh, restriction tests and reset those uh, uh, sensor back there, the restriction levels uh, once I do this, but it won't let me do it until I do a regen. So um, like I said, hopefully that was a good thing with that water being in there and um, like I said we'll see what happens so uh, we'll let you know.
All right, so we're back. Um, the truck did a regen for about a little, about an hour, maybe a little bit less, um, which is a good thing. Um, the other day, yesterday, actually when I stopped in the morning, since I was having all that trouble, um, I put it into a forest regen over there south of Texarkana. And it went on for about three hours and I finally stopped it manually myself. So it never did finish. So it's a good sign that it only did it for about 50 minutes or so and actually stopped itself, the truck stopped it, um, shut down. Then um, I did uh, the uh, restriction test on the uh, uh, differential pressure sensor. I just forgot the word of it. Um, on the uh, after, before ash and after ash, both of those passed. Um, it gets pretty wild when you do that. Um, on the PDI here, it has that function where you can do the force region and where you can do the uh, deferential pressure test or restriction test. And uh, so this thing had to rev up to about 2,000 RPM and it'll stay there for about three or four minutes. And um, then it, it, so it gets really loud. So I'm glad uh, we got that finished. Like I said, both of those pass. So now I'm going to go ahead and whip this thing around here and get, get back in and maybe try to go in there and grab a shower and. Uh, call it a day and uh, head over to Laredo tomorrow and grab another load. So uh, I'm going to show you guys real quick here this uh, on the PDI if you can see it without a glare um, those two functions uh, for your deep for your emission system on here. So I'll go ahead and flip this around and show you guys that. Okay here's the PDI and I've showed the video done a video on this before so if you haven't seen that video you can look that up on the channel. Um, you'll go to vehicle diagnostics, this run diagnostics check, this is going to show you any codes and um, I got this coolant level sensor code coming up because my, there's a, somewhere in the, the customer side of the, uh, the PACAR harness, not the Cummins harness, that goes up to that. Something ain't right in there, something's loose and I just, I need to buy the harness but uh, it gets really annoying with that thing dinging the whole time. I mean those sensors are notorious. Um, for doing it, so I just unplug it and I check my coolant level every day. So I mean that is an option. It'll throw it. It'll put your check engine light on, but it won't derate the truck or shut the truck down. But uh, if you do decide to unplug it um, to get rid of the noise, the dinging, uh, the little alarm, and uh, just be sure to, to keep an eye on your coolant level. Um, so you can clear fault codes, but the truck has to be off with a key on. Um, this one obviously won't go away. So I have no codes now. And um, I didn't show you guys see the dash. Um, no more D-rate light, no more DPF light. Uh, obviously, I have the check engine light on for that coolant level sensor. But all the bad stuff, nasty stuff we had two hours ago is gone. So we'll see how she performed tonight or early morning tomorrow. We'll run over to Laredo. Um, we got some higher speed limits out here, so we'll, we'll put her to the test. Um, now we'll go back vehicle diagnostics again you get to run diagnostic tests and this is where you get that after treatment particular filter regeneration so this is where you can do a forced regen and this does it it gets a lot hotter and does it a lot more thoroughly than what the truck would do it if you hit that button on your dash now this um, DPF restriction test this is what tests that um, uh, differential pressure I keep forgetting the word after <laughs> Um, so you have before ash and after ash, so you'll hit which one you want to do and then that's when uh, the engine revs up really high for a couple of minutes and then it'll come back and it'll say if it passed or failed. So then if you want to do the other one, you got to wait for a couple of minutes. Um, if you hit it right after, it, it, won't, it, will say it won't let the test start, so you got to wait a couple of minutes in between. So uh, that's pretty much those features. Um, you have to... I know somebody was asking or had asked, they, did, they didn't have these on there. So you actually have to update, um, you have to do an update on your PDI. You have to connect it to Wi-Fi. Uh, you can go on here. But uh, on, if you're going to connect to your phone, you have to have it on uh, the 2G. It, on the 5G, it won't connect. Um, but once you have it, you switch your phone settings on the Wi-Fi to 2G and it connect and it'll download. I hook mine up about once a month just to check for any new updates or anything because mine did a whole update and changed the whole screen look and it gave me those two new feet before I didn't have the region feature or the differential pressure or restriction test uh, so that's when um, when I did that big update it changed everything and gave me those two test features so um, 
And also it changed um, this screen too. It used to just give you like the code. It did, and now it gives you a little bit more information there. So um, that's pretty much it on the PDI. So I'm um, glad to see that we got a clean dash other than that um, coolant level sensor thing, but I don't really care about that. So let me flip this back around. So that's, um, like I said, you gotta be really careful with this stuff uh, when you're messing with these emission systems. Let me get out of the truck, that's a little bit warm in there. That thing gets to about 11, 1200 degrees. Uh, so kind of warm, especially when it's 70 degrees out or so, it can get pretty warm um, inside the truck there. But uh, if I would've took this thing to a shop on the road, I, I imagine I probably wouldn't have got out of there for less than $5,000. They probably would have put it, wanted to clean the DPF or put a new DPF on it and blah, 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 and on and on and on. And, and, and I would have had to cancel my other load and my other plans that I have uh, for the next week or so. Uh, so it would have screwed everything up when it's something as a $130 sensor. And you, on these codes and stuff, like if you got that PDI, it gives you a lot of information. You kind of read in between the lines and what it's telling you. Not, okay, my trucks won't regen. It keeps, re or it keeps regen and it won't finish. I need, to, I need to clean my DPF filter. Well, if I would have cleaned that filter, I would have had the exact same problem. I mean, and, and, and you still would have figured out. This, this happens to people all the time with these emission systems. Um, these guys take this stuff to the shop and it's a little sensor, a temp sensor or something and the guys can't figure it out. The next thing you know, they got a five, ten thousand dollar bill and they're driving away and their truck still ain't fixed yet. So, um, it's, it's the little things, the sensors and the wiring that are the problems on this stuff that you got to look into and use your head about it. Now, what, what keyed me into this was that okay if my dpf there's something wrong with the dpf filter it should have been a constant problem i mean it shouldn't have went away and came back went away and came back so that tells me there's something intermittent in there it isn't a solid hardware problem like a dpf filter being plugged up it just it just didn't seem right that it would come then go away come to get severe then go to nothing and that tells me it's something something sensitive like a sensor or a wiring um so, like I said, well, we're going to run it tonight. I'm satisfied with the way the, the region went and everything, and uh, we'll see what happens. So, uh, if, uh, yeah, so, uh, losing my train of thought here. But uh, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, please do that. We're always putting out videos on uh, maintenance, uh, owner operator trucking, Landstar stuff, uh, we do the farming thing, farm stuff, projects at home, always got something going on. Uh, like I said, like truck maintenance, farm equipment maintenance, uh, other little DIY projects here and there. Uh, so like I said, uh, check us out, give us a thumbs up. Uh, like I said, subscribe, hit the bell for the updates. And I uh, hope this might help you out. And like I said, look into these little problems. So we'll see you next time.